Yes, yes, people, it is Luke here wearing sunglasses indoors because I just finished morning yoga and generally afterwards, my face is just unpleasant. You know those um tips that appear at the bottom of the loading page? You know the ones that say, press jump to jump. Well, I had the idea, what if I made a video like that, except the tips are actually useful. So today, this is 50 things you actually want to know, but probably don't in Rocket League. Number one, every control is useful. This includes the obvious controls that you think are useful, like jump and boost and air roll, but it also includes the controls you should be using that you aren't. We're talking about camera pitch, reverse cam, even things as basic as power slide. If you're watching right now and you don't have them bound, you're just playing at a disadvantage. So in Rocket League, if every keybind does not have spot on your controller and you're not above Grand Champ, go watch one of my settings guide or anybody's settings guide before you do anything else. Number two, you can find lists of the most popular pro settings on a website called Liquipedia. I've transitioned from KBM to controller. And after that, switched my controls three times before landing on the pretty bad ones that I have today. But every single time I made a change, I always went to Liquipedia. So if you're thinking about changing controller settings, camera settings, anything, go to Liquipedia and use the pros as inspiration, but also be careful to not copy them straight up. Experiment to find what works for you. Number three, you can find public replays of pro ranked matches on ballchasing.com. This was really cool for me when I first discovered it because for the average show like you and me, we can watch any pro we want, even the ones who don't upload on YouTube. So if you have a pro that you're trying to play like, or maybe you just want to spy on your friends, you do you, go to ball chasing and with enough searching, you can find anything. Number four, almost all pros play on the lowest video settings for the least distractions and best comp performance. Also, almost all pros are on PC. Now, as many of you know, I started a premium Rocket League coaching program. I think we're the most expensive and also best program out there in my humble biased opinion. And as much as I wish I could sit here and tell you that the best investment you can make is my program, the truth is the best investment you can make if you're playing Rocket League on console is just to get a PC. I didn't make the rules, but the fact that you have workshop maps on PC, the fact that you have things like Bacchus Mod and other training tools, and just the fact that input lag isn't like crippling on PC means if you go from console to PC, you will straight up play faster. Number five, bind power slide and joystick air roll to the same button on your controller. If you weren't aware, power slide only happens on the ground and joystick air roll only happens in the air. So put them on the same button to make your recovery smoother and just to free up some real estate on your controller. Number six, Joystick air roll and directional air roll are not the same thing. The lesson I found is joystick air roll is generally better for ground recoveries and air roll shots, whereas directional air roll is what you wanna prioritize on long-term aerial plays. So start with joystick air roll for the basics and then consider picking up one of the directional air roll binds, whether it's air roll left or air roll right as you climb the ranks. Number seven, sensitivity settings are massively underrated. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just like there's mouse sensitivity in shooter games, Rocket League has controller sensitivity. So while the pros may use high sensitivities, anywhere from 1.4 to 2.0, if you're a new player, I recommend you start out with a lower sensitivity so you can just focus on consistency and learning the basics. A good launch pad for ground and aerial sensitivity is anything between 1.2 and 1.0. 0.4 steering and aerial sense. And then once again, as you climb ranks, slowly test out small increases to improve your speed as you go. Number eight, you can hold your first jump to continue climbing height for a maximum of 200 milliseconds or one fifth of a second. So what this means is if you're somebody who just double taps your jumps to fast aerial, you're doing it wrong. Instead, you almost always want to hold down your first jump to max out your jump timer before you eventually flip into the ball or use that second jump for a fast aerial. So whether you're jumping off the ground for a fast aerial or jumping off the wall, you almost always want to max your first jump timer before you use your second dodge. Number nine, objects are further than they appear. 
In real life, when you're driving a car, they always tell you objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Unlike in real life, in Rocket League, objects are actually further than they appear. The problem with this is that in practice, many low ranked players go into Rocket League and they pre-jump or take off way sooner than they need to. Remember, in Rocket League, the ball or the opponent is almost always further than they appear. So avoid jumping too high and too early. Otherwise, you're just going to have to course correct down and you're going to get into the habit of spiking all your aerial shots straight into the ground for easy saves. Quick warning before I go on, the Grand Champ Bootcamp is enrolling just 10 more players this week. The Grand Champ Bootcamp specializes in helping gold through champ ranked players rank up to GC in just 90 days time. When you join, you gain immediate access to a network of over 3,000 competitive players, and then you're tested and matched with a best fit coach based on your custom needs. Every step of the way is personalized as you go so that you make the most ranked progress during your first 90 days. So if you're done being hard stuck, DM the GCB with the keyword stuck to learn more about coaching. I'll have their new client account listed first link in the description below. So click the link to learn more. Number 10, there is no such thing as a mechanical plat. If you're watching right now and you think you're a mechanical plat, the truth is you are just a plat. I know this hurts, but I'm saying this because I've been there before and I want to protect you. Look, the last thing you want is to be the guy in Twitch chat talking about all the mechanics you know and how despite you know all these mechanics, you are still in plat. Everyone knows. People who talk about how mechanical they are are not the type of people that are usually very mechanical. 11. There are two ways to half flip and also two ways to speed flip. Long story short, you should learn how to half flip both ways, but you don't need to know both of the ways to speed flip. If you know what I'm talking about, just learn the air roll method or the joystick method for speed flips, but make sure you learn how to quarter flip and how to do perfect half flips for half flips. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see my most recent recovery guide for more. I explain it all there. Number 12, don't defend from inside the net. This is not soccer and you are not a goalkeeper. Sure, once you get to Grand Champ 1, then you can come back and talk to me about going front post instead of back post and going through your net for squishy saves instead of just rotating around. But if you are Champ 2 or below, the reason you're not ranking up is because you think you're smarter than you are. If you want to rank up, simply stop thinking you're smarter than you are and play by the rules. Number 13, corners eat time. All else equal, a play in the corner will progress much slower than a play in the center of the field. What this means is when you're on offense, you want to try to attack to the middle to apply pressure quicker. Opposite, when you're on defense, you want to force them into the corner to stall time. You need to understand, once you get past the champ ranks, you can't just boom the ball into your opponent's corner and expect them to give up goals and let you climb rank. Same thing goes on defense. You can't just sit in net and let attackers move through the center of the field and expect to be able to save a well-placed flick or a well-set-up bounce dribble. If you want to learn how to play corners, watch my video called The Only Video You Need to Rank Up. I cover corner forcing and everything you need to know in way more depth there. Number 14, all tips are useful. They just might not be useful at your rank. Since we're almost halfway through the video and you're clearly one of the real ones, I want you to know that almost any tip that you hear in Rocket League is useful and is helpful for somebody at some rank. The hard part about improving in Rocket League is that what works in one rank might not work in the next. So as you're progressing, you need to constantly learn and also unlearn rules that got you to the rank you're at to ultimately be able to get to the next one. The truth is, if you want to get better, these YouTube videos are like the fourth best way to do it. Behind like actual replay analysis and actual in-game hours and experience, really the only way to truly accelerate your improvement faster than anybody else is to get personalized coaching. Number 15, power slide or drift is one of the most underrated controls in Rocket League. The higher rank you want to be, the more you need to power slide. I explained this more in my recent recovery video. So remember, power slide for short durations, but often. 
Number 16, you can often generate more power through diagonal flips and barrel rolls than straight up front flips. So when you're bounce dribbling, for example, prioritize barrel rolls for better direction change on your shot, more power behind them, and also for a quicker recovery afterward. Number 17, you can change the size of player name tags in game. For comp purposes, I recommend you increase the setting to at least 150%, but honestly, the higher the better. Number 18, you can check your FPS on PC by hitting F10. And if you're on console, you can just hit the power button on your console here and never have to worry about FPS again. Number 19, there are six types of car hitboxes in Rocket League, all with their unique features, benefits, and drawbacks. But in the end, it won't really matter because you're just going to use the Octane. Number 20. 90% of the game, you should have ball cam toggled on. This includes when you are grabbing boosts, rotating, or waiting for the play to develop. During these moments of action, do not turn off ball cam to go get boost or rotate around, because if you do, that's how you end up being the guy who's picking up boost while the ball's rolling into your net. Number 21 learn to walk before you run. I know it might sound harsh, but as we speak, there are hundreds, if not thousands of champ players mindlessly spamming air dribbles in free play. And the truth is none of them are going to rank up until they realize that their problem is not air dribbles. It's just that they need to hit open nets. Master the basics before you try to get fancy and learn high level mechanics. Number 22, so you know how I told you earlier about how you can tap to jump quickly and hold to jump longer? Well, the exception to this is if you somehow become airborne without using your first jump. For example, if you fall off the ceiling or somehow become airborne without using your first jump, your second jump is saved indefinitely. This normally only comes into play off the ceiling, but remember, if you're driving off the inside of your net or even off the roof of your net, as in a squishy save, or if you get bumped into the air, remember that you always have a flip. Number 23, direction in Rocket League does not depend on where your camera is facing, it's where your nose is facing. This is why flipping backwards, as in a musty flick, will propel you forwards if your nose is tilted towards your screen. This is also why if you jump off of a wall and air roll to put your car upside down, you can then neutral jump to rather than jump up, propel yourself down and get grounded quicker. Number 24, all flips except for sideways ones can be canceled at any point in the flip animation by quickly pushing your joystick in the opposite direction you initiated your dodge. This means you can instantly flip cancel a front flip or you can go halfway through a front flip animation and then only cancel at the end to leave your nose facing backward. Anything in the middle is just a different flip cancel variation. You can experiment with this in free play to speed up your recoveries. Number 25, speed flips are the fastest flip in Rocket League, not because they actually make you move faster than a front flip or a diagonal flip, but because when you speed flip, your nose faces forward throughout the entire animation. What this means is you can hold boost throughout a speed flip and accelerate throughout, unlike a front flip where you have to let go halfway through. It's also for this reason that speed flips can be used in the air to pre-flip balls or pre-jump off walls at the pro level. Number 26, always hold power side when you land in Rocket League on any surface. Number 27, don't underestimate that tip. I say it all the time, but the reason is because you should be power sliding all the time. Whether you're landing on a wall, on the ground, recovering off of the ceiling, or simply wave dashing around the field, holding power side will make you play faster. This is the real secret pro players use to play fast. Number 28, the part of your car you use to hit the ball matters a ton. You can be flying at a ball really fast, but if you realize last second it's not good, you don't want to throw away possession, a quick air roll to expose your wheels can help you get a soft touch on the ball when players otherwise wouldn't expect it. So in order of strongest to weakest parts of your car, the list goes number one, corners, number two, front rim, number three, hood, 
Number four, back and sides. And then number five, wheels. You might think you always just want to go hard and hit the ball fast, which is sometimes true. But remember, especially for you kids watching, it's not all about the size of the boat. It's also about the motion of the ocean. Number 29, if you have the option to dodge and jump or just double jump, you should almost always opt for the jump plus dodge. All I'm trying to say here is if the ball isn't that high off the ground and you can save your flip to flip into it, try not to make a habit of just double jumping all the time. Instead, jump, save your flip, and then flip through the ball when you connect with it for the most powerful clear. Number 30, a lot of people underestimate the amount of time and the amount of height you can gain in the air before your second jump expires. Go into free play and practice holding down jump until you can jump above the crossbar on your net and still flip into the wall. This is a great drill to teach you the timing of how long your dodge is saved, and this alone will save you tons in ranked. Number 31, don't stop halfway through. A mistake I see a lot at the lower ranks, especially with people who tend to hesitate, is jumping up really fast for a ball, but then slowing down as the aerial goes on to try to get the perfect touch or try to lock in some perfect angle. In reality, you want to do the exact opposite. That means instead of jumping, then slowing down to get the read, focus on getting the read while you're grounded. And only then, once you have your read, commit 100% through the shot and boost the entire way through. All right, since we're on 32, we're going to blitz through to some mechanics tips. I'm getting a little sleepy here. You know, I should take off the, maybe it's the sunglasses. I should take off these sunglasses. Yikes. Boost throughout your fast aerials. Number 33, just because something is hard to learn doesn't mean it's worth it to learn. I'm looking at you, diamonds, training flip resets. Just because you're not able to do a flip reset doesn't mean you would rank up if you did. But the truth is, if right now you're a diamond two who can't get to diamond three, you would just become a diamond two that can't get to diamond three that also knows flip resets. Number 34, good things happen when you hit the ball above your opponent's backboard. People below champ, just don't know what backboard defense is. And even if they do know what it is, I don't think they know how to do it. So if you get the ball and you're on offense and you don't know what to do, just try hitting it off the backboard. And 60% of the time, your opponent will just remove themselves from the play and you'll have an open net. Number 35, aim to score your air dribbles one length above the real goal. This is gonna reinforce the previous tip we were talking about. Number 36, if someone is contesting your air dribble or contesting your flick or contesting you in any way earlier than you wanted to, it is never a bad idea to just go for a low 50-50 the thing you've got to understand is the worst thing you can do against an early challenger is just stick to your previous plan and try to flick it or try to go for the air dribble. Instead, the way you punish monkey challengers is by letting the monkey challenge and then punishing them with that low 50-50 once they do. The fact is, if you're getting early challenged and you can't get the ball around your opponents, the problem is probably not that your flicks aren't fast enough. The problem is that your 50-50s aren't good enough and you're avoiding them at all costs. Number 37. You can hold air roll while you make contact with a ball in the air, whether that's joystick air roll or directional air roll to reduce the knockback you take on the initial touch. I don't know why this works, but it works. So give it a shot. Number 38, when you're going for double taps, remember to create space between you and the ball so that you don't end up just smushing the ball against the wall. Also pro tip, as is with almost everything in Rocket League, less is more. If you're lined up for the double tap and all you need to do is drive forward to score it, just drive forward to score it. Stop the fancy air roll spins and the air roll once you're lined up with the ball. Otherwise, you're just gonna air roll your way right out of the way. Remember, simple scales, fancy fails. Rocket League is hard. If you're having trouble learning a mechanic at full speed, consider using Bacchus Mod or creating a private match to slow down the game speed to half or even quarter speed to learn a mechanic in slow-mo before you try to use it in game. Number 40. Training packs are like training wheels. Yes, you need to learn how to ride the tricycle before you can learn to ride the bicycle. Use training packs and workshop maps to teach yourself the fundamentals and master them. But once you're warmed up to a mechanic, get in free play to learn it for real. Number 41, do not dump and chase. Your number one goal on offense is to get as close to the net as possible before you go for your shot. So this means if nobody is pressuring you and you have the ball at midfield, do not just slam the ball into your opponent's corner. 
That's what the defenders want you to do. Instead, if nobody's pressuring you, you need to learn mechanics like a dribble, like a bounce dribble, like an air dribble even, that allow you to keep a ball close while moving it downfield. This is the only way you're gonna get through champ. Number 42, don't learn the wrong lesson. What got you to the rank you're at might not be the thing that gets you to the rank where you want to go. Just because hitting the ball and making booming clears all the time got you through plat doesn't mean you're gonna be able to get through champ without knowing how to dribble. I'm not saying you need to know everything, but don't think you have it all figured out because you got past one rank. You need to be open to criticism and changing what you believe to be true that in reality isn't the truth. Number 43. Occam's razor is some fancy term that says the simpler method is almost always better than the advanced one. What does this mean in Rocket League? It means all those situations where you think you should be going for the air dribble, consider just going for the bounce dribble because while fancy mechanics look cool, what's not cool is the five seconds you're laying on your back in your opponent's net recovering because you missed the flip reset. This applies mostly to Grand Champs and below because frankly, below Grand Champ, the game is not a matter of outplaying your opponents. It's simply a matter of not outplaying yourself. Number 44, stop cherry picking for the pass from your solo queue teammate. Look, your teammate can't even see the dude right in his face. That's early challenging him. So needless to say, he does not see you waiting downfield for the pass. Just play behind your solo queue teammates. Number 45, stop giving up on the attack and stay upfield. For whatever reason, people below champ give up on offense way before they should. Routinely, will I see diamonds completely turn off ball cam and ignore free center balls and open net opportunities where the ball's rolling mid and nobody's there all because they need boost and had to rotate back to their corner to get it. Boost is available everywhere on the map. So do not leave your teammate upfield, especially if you have pressure, all just to go pick up your corner boost. Number 46. At the same time, don't get baited on centers. Back when I was in Diamond and Champ, the only insult that usually got was the what a save. But nowadays, a lot of Diamonds and Champs are expanding their vocabulary to not only what a save, but also take the shot. If you are the person waiting for the pass, the way it works is you only go if it is 100% clean, free, and safe. And honestly, bonus tip, turn off chat, and you're gonna be much better off. 49, while we're on the topic of solo queue teammates, just don't solo queue. At the low ranks, I'm talking, you know, gold, plat. Whether or not you have comms is pretty much a non-factor. But once you get to diamond and champ, the difference between double committing and losing in overtime might just be having comms. If you don't have a teammate, that's okay. Good news for you is I actually run Rocket League's largest free improvement discord where people go to improve and also find teammates. So if you're tired of solo queue teammates and you want somebody that just gets it, check out my discord. It's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. I'll have it first link down below. And lastly, final piece of advice from me, play for improvement, not rank. Look, I'm not gonna be your parent and give you some speech. It's about the journey, not the destination and all that. The biggest barrier to your progress in the long run is not any of the tactical stuff we talked about in this video. You know what the biggest thing that's gonna hold you back in the long run? It's you. Look, we're all human and over time, even the most unathletic of us will improve at Rocket League given enough time. The only way that you can guarantee that you will stop ranking up is to throw your hands in the air, to give up, to put it out of your control and say, I quit, right? Because while you might have all the reasons in the world to be valid in your cry, while you theoretically in the realm of possibilities that you are the most unlucky Rocket League player of all time, while it might be possible, the odds that you are him is low. So moral of the story, you are not him. This one game in plat two, as much as you think it matters, it doesn't matter. Turn off all chat, grab a soda pop, relax, and it's all gonna be all right. My name's Luke. I make Rocket League videos for a living. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace guys. Oh, and uh, follow me on Instagram or something. That'd be sick. You don't wanna miss out on that.